I think it's time we painted a good old fashioned gimmick free miniature. I said old fashioned, that's better. If you weren't aware, my Kickstarter, which is live right now, also includes 32 millimeter versions of the Wood Elf designs as well. People asked for a 32 millimeter version of the Duchess, so I took that feedback and applied it to these designs as well. Recently, I watched Alex from 52 Miniatures paint up the 75 millimeter version of the Witch in his video, which you can find linked below, and it inspired me. Alex picked more of a autumnal theme for the Witch, so it got me wanted to do a winter version of her. This kind of reminds me of the old paint jobs you can find in my Wood Elf army books from Warhammer Fantasy. Why Wood Elves wouldn't just live in a place that's always warm is beyond me, but at least in this fantasy world, it inspires the color schemes of our miniatures. When the model was done being cleaned and assembled, I primed it black. Apparently, no one taught me to close my mouth. You got some real caveman vibes going on here, Scott. I chose black because I'm working each section up from a dark shadow to a brighter highlight. I feel like I have more control when I paint in this way. It almost simplifies the process. Then, I got a bunch of different blue colors to spark my imagination. I painted the detail that was most central to the model. My plan is to work outwards from here to limit any mistakes I might make from reaching a paintbrush into a deep part of the model, resulting in a glancing blow from the side of my brush on a finished part. Despite me starting on this part of the model, her shirt isn't an important detail, and as such, I chose a fairly neutral cold tone. I painted this with dark sea blue and Mojave white and a mixture in between those two colors. Since Mojave white has a smidge of yellow in it, mixing it with blue gives me a very mild green. Considering I'm painting a wood elf, this felt like a good homage. Despite starting with a dark color, the overall impression of the shirt at the end is that it's quite bright. As painters, we're able to adjust what the perceived color of any part of our miniature is by choosing how much of each layer of color to leave behind. I didn't leave much dark color behind, so it ended up looking brighter. Next, I worked on her sleeveless jacket cape combo. Pretty strange clothing choices. Who designed this mini? I used a bunch of scale 75 blues that I don't normally use. There seemed to be an obvious triad of blues, and I decided to use them together. I often don't use triads of colors when I'm hiding or shading because mixing paints is simpler for me, but sometimes using pre-mixed paint can make for fun color choices. When you mix a progression of colors with a shadow, mid-tone, and highlight color, sometimes it can feel a little flat color-wise. Of course, you can fix this by adding in any other hues you want with some glazes over the top of this gradient, but if you used pre-mixed colors, sometimes those added hues are already mixed into the paint, so you get a little extra something-something. You know what I'm saying? Scott! No one can understand what you're saying. You're arting all over them. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that I am I may have a tendency to over-explain. Have you guys ever noticed? After the blue jacket cape, I worked on the skin. I experimented again with Nocturna N Models paint, specifically the skin tone range. I was going back and forth in my head between this character being impervious to the cold weather or not. In the end, I decided that she would have very rosy skin because of the coldness. I felt that it would contrast nicely with the blues in the scheme. With that base coat applied, I started to mix in a cold off-white, Arctic Blue from Scale 75 to get my highlights for the skin. Do this in several passes, mixing more and more cold white into the base tone. In the end, I was using pure Arctic Blue in very small areas. When I came to painting the face, I used a lot of advice I followed in the last video I made, which you should definitely check out. With some red ink, I glazed in some saturated red tones into her cheeks, temples, elbows, knuckles, and knees. I went full Spaniard on this and really sent it regarding the saturation of the red. Make sure you work in multiple layers, slowly building up the saturation that you want. Next up, I worked on the hair, which I knew I wanted to be a bright white. I began wet blending from a darker blue to a teal. Something important to mention is how I'm not leaving any dark color behind in the recesses on the top of her head. I'm fully covering it in teal. This is because as volumes on your miniature get brighter, so did the shadows. On top of her hair, the shadow is teal, and the highlight is white. On the bottom of her hair, the shadow is navy blue, and the highlight is teal. If I were to keep the navy blue in the shadows on top of her head, the hair wouldn't have the same white punch as it does when I'm finished highlighting. On the horns, I opted for a black color with cold highlights so that they would stand out against the white hair. If I painted them in a typical bone color, they'd probably just get lost in the white and be seen as more hair. Before moving on to the next part of the miniature, let's hear a brief word from our sponsor, me. I'm running a Kickstarter campaign and it's live right now. You can pick up this miniature I'm painting solely as an add-on or other awesome goodies as well, like a bespoke metal brush box called the Brush Coffin, fitted with two high-density foam trays for 12 or more brushes and other similar tools. 
You can also pick up 75 millimeter wood owls, beautifully casted in resin, available in 32 millimeter scale as well, and also pre-supported STLs for 3D printing. Each of the bigger miniatures come with an in-depth course designed to be watched alongside painting these figures, and each teaches you something different and unique. Also, on the last day of the campaign, which is March 21st, I'll be live streaming from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. CST. That's the last eight hours of my campaign. Every hour, I'm doing an epic giveaway while painting a model from my campaign, answering questions, and anything else that comes up along the way. I'll be giving away gaming stuff, display stuff, minis, hobby accessories, and more. Mark your calendars and show up for an epic eight hour long giveaway fueled stream. If you wanna see a ton of additional information about the campaign, you can find a link in the description below. On to all the natural elements on the miniature. First, I base coated everything in deep blue from scale 75, a color that I lean on a lot as a shadow. Then I busted out a couple different brown colors, some warmer, some yellow, some neutral. I began with highlighting the wood with a warmer brown color, mixing more and more ochre and Mojave white from before into it. The ochre is there to prevent the hut from becoming too much like the color salmon, which isn't a bad thing, but it wasn't something I was going for. It was also at this point that I removed the cape to make it easier to paint, and by removed, I mean I totally broke it off while manhandling this model. When I finished layering my colors up, I took a risk. I have a snow wash product from a company called Precision Ice and Snow. I applied it to the wood elements of the miniature like snow was getting lodged amongst the crevices, and when it dried, I wasn't entirely happy with the end result. To be fair to this company, I don't think this is the intended use of the product, and also, this might look good in some other instances. To make this look more like what I was going for, I took Aethermatic Blue, a contrast paint, and also Aquelia Green Shade, a wash, both products from GW, and I reduced the whiteness of the snow to something colder and more shaded. I actually really liked the little pops of color amongst the bark once I finished this step. Next up for the leaves, I just used a variety of those brown tones mixed together to resemble dead leaves, which to me made sense. It's winter time. This decision also allowed me to use more warm colors to frame all of these cold hues. I often like to find story-driven reasons to motivate my color choices. Maybe this results in a paint app that's more realistic or easier for humans to understand. I'm not entirely sure, but it's easier for me to think in this way. Next up, I worked on the metal, starting with Scale 75 Black Metal, which is a subtly blue, dark steel color. I then hot it with Heavy Metal, also from Scale 75, unsurprisingly. Once I scratched in some basic highlights, I brought in some contrast with some Coelia green shade glazes, and you're likely having a hard time seeing this process because despite filming miniature painting for literally six years, I still struggle to keep everything in frame, in focus, and not going through the literal glass of my glasses. You would think I'd have it figured out by now. Once I had some contrast in, I finished it off with a very shiny highlight of Molotow Chrome, an ink used for markers, actually. I applied this pretty minimally and also did a bit of edge highlighting with it. The armored necklace thing can be a little fiddly to paint at times, so don't feel bad going back and forth, reestablishing the recess in between each piece with some nice dark paint. All right, let's finish off this base. Because a lot of this base is gonna be covered in snow, I didn't spend too long painting the base. I just slapped on a bunch of different blue hues. Next, I grabbed some icicles from Green Stuff World and shaved them down to fit my needs and placed them in various areas. The model comes with a fun, scenic base, allowing for some pretty straightforward places to add some of these icicles. Lastly, let's get a snow mixture going. I took light molding paste from Golden and mixed it with white paint, Woodland Scenic Soft Snowflake for some snowflake heterogeneity, and some Interference Blue Pigment for some pearlescent shimmer. I needed some extra water to get everything to mix nicely. The white paint was new for me. I know a lot of hobbyists add white paint to their snow mixtures, but for me, this made the snow mixture too opaque and too aggressive. There's a good chance I put too much white paint in. Further experiments are needed. I actually love just using straight light molding paste for snow. It handles perfectly, it has the right opacity and color, and it can be thin with water for an even meltier version of the snow. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if companies just repackage this for hobby snow products and increase the price. Wait a second, these look pretty similar. <laughs> Lastly, I took some of that aethermatic blue and airbrushed around the edge of the snow to have a nice frosty shadow around the base rim. With that last step finished, I present the winter version of the witch complete. I had a lot of fun painting my first ever winter wood elf. I tend to put on artistic blinders when painting wood elves and just go for tons of greens. It's always a fun exercise trying to balance cold hues with warm hues across the miniature. But working with blue is a ton of fun. It can be both a shadow and a highlight, which isn't entirely true of all colors, so there's a lot of flexibility when painting a miniature like I was here, mostly with one hue. Do you know who never puts on artistic blinders? My patrons. Thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who have supported me during this Kickstarter campaign. 
I have definitely been slacking on giving them the appreciation they deserve while this campaign ramped up, but now Papa is back to spread the mini love. Thank you for your patience, team. It really means a lot. If you guys want to check out my Patreon and the rewards therein, you can find a link below. That'll do it for this video, guys. I realize that I'm being extra shilly during this Kickstarter campaign period, and I appreciate your patience with me. Sometimes it can be a challenge to balance how much to talk about sponsored stuff and content in a platform where all the content is free and a lot of the creators do this for a living. I'm sorry if it's felt like at any point that I have sold out. That's not my intention. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay my medals!